been a fucking while as usual. But uh, the season is over, and all throughout the season, when I had some time off, I've been working on the V5 of the twin turbo diesel. So let's have a little look. So as you can see, it's still gold, of course, you know, but it's uh, an actual true gold color for once. I did not cheap out on the paint. From anyone that have seen this motor before, you'll notice that there's a couple little different things going on. Some things you might already see standing out a little bit. For instance, this here. Y'all might not even know what this is, but it's a quick spool valve. So on the V5 version of the uh, twin turbo setup is addressing a lot of the problems from the V4. So the V4, it had major turbo lag. And that was basically it. It just had really bad turbo lag. And a couple little things that I'll get into in a moment. But So to address the turbo lag, I got these quick spool valves. And so they just close off one side of the turbine housing on the turbo because it's a twin scroll turbo and this is an open face manifold so it's all just getting shoved into whichever port that it feels like so with the quick spool valve it completely shuts off one side of the turbo and feeds all the exhaust pressure into that uh, one open uh, part of the housing and then uh, as the boost opens as the boost starts hitting on the compressor side it comes from this little valve that i don't have a hose clamp on yet goes into this wastegate which will open up both sides of the valve, allowing full spool at higher RPMs. So that way you don't have high drive pressure, kind of equals it out, makes it a little bit more drivable, better fuel efficiency, better power down low, things like that. So quick spool valves is number one. And because these quick spool valves are their second variation, they also have coolant ports on them. So I had to modify my rear coolant crossover to adapt to that. And so I just added a T-valve with another joiner and a 90 degree going into a barb fitting that goes right into the quick spool valve uh, coolant passages. And the same thing on the back side, just a T joiner and 90 degree. And uh, one problem I had during the winter with the um, rear coolant crossover is that I wasn't actually able to build up heat because the way that the coolant flows through the heads, it goes through the back of the heads and kind of gets trapped back there, which adds a lot of cracking to between the valves on the cylinder heads and could even possibly crack pistons from excess heat. But now with the rear coolant crossover, it gets rid of all those issues. And in the winter, when you need some heat in the cab, which is the main issue I was having, I got this little valve here, ball valve. So now with typical fashion, absolutely perfect clearance there. I can just close off all the coolant flow and run it as a typical 6.5 or I can just adjust it, you know, like a little bit all the way cut off, all the way open, whatever, you know, works perfect. Um, so I did have, I, I still do have my injection pump, the current, the gold one that was in it before, sent off to uh, Vernlin Martin to get customized into a 180cc injection pump over the 90cc is what it currently is. And I'm going to be getting that one back and I'll be putting that, uh, 4911 DB2 back into this truck and I'll be sending this here like 4962 whatever the fuck it is uh, Stock DB2 off to get built so that way I'll have a pump that Has all the brackets and all these little things that I need in order to make a run back in here The one that I've already had I know that works fine It's already turned up and I have the timing marks for adjusting the timing to its peak potential back in this motor Um, So the injector lines I got them slightly painted black instead of gold. It just looks a little bit less fancy, which is what I'm aiming for. These are some old Bosch injectors. My newer ones that I have are actually with Verlin as well. I don't know if he's going to pop pressure test them or whatever. But yeah, so on top of that there, we have the flow cooler water pump to maximize the balance between coolant flow in the heads and the HD fan clutch and pulley. There's the fan over there with the clutch from Quadstar. Good stuff, good stuff. And um, yeah, there's not really much aside from that, just looking at this motor. This is like, you know, the old downpipe that I made. I'm gonna have to be making a new one at some point in time because it's just the bends aren't efficient, the welds aren't 100%, and it's also made with rusty metal. And I also ran into a clearance issue with this wastegate. Um, Diesel Pump UK says that the wastegates are good for heat, so I'm hoping that stands true because it's like literally right next to the fucking downpipe, anyways. And um, 
All the clearance, of course, is pretty damn good, you know, especially when it comes to the driver's side of this here. Well, I'm going to have to move this a little bit. The injector line has just enough clearance to fit like 20 pieces of paper between it. You can see right here, there's just enough room to fit 20 pieces of paper between there. That there is probably like five pieces of paper. And then you got this little area down here. That's a coolant port. And it has, you know, like four or five pieces of paper of clearance. And same thing up and under. It all works perfect. And even the injector lines perfectly clear everything. So it actually worked out way better than what I thought for just adding a custom part onto this. And so another thing is that I'm going to be doing away with this upper intake plenum 100% and making a new one out of a stock um, upper intake plenum. I'll just be chopping it up using the actual charge pipe to uh, make for the couplers or the pipes for the uh, turbo so it can couple up to that. It's going to be a lot stronger. It's going to hold its boost better. It's going to be completely designed into factory spec essentially. And it's not going to have sensors for DS4 injection pump. The methanol jet is not going to be there anymore, and there's not going to be a blow-off valve. It's just going to be like a little boost uh, sensor there, and the two pipes for the turbos, and that's it. So now, speaking of the methanol, they're actually going to be put into the intakes next time. And through the pipe of the intake, there's going to be like a little bracket that's on a 90, comes down from the pipe, and then points into the turbo and that's where the injector for the methanol is going to be facing directly into the turbine because the reason why this motor had to be rebuilt because the head gaskets were actually gone the front cylinders on both these head gaskets were gone so i'm assuming that the methanol jet is too far forward which that's exactly how it appears and if that isn't the case then maybe it was just tipped on an angle and was feeding more methanol into the front cylinders which caused them to pop so one issue that I have with this here um, motor that I've done, and I've you know this is my second time doing it now, so I know the head gaskets are going to go, especially with the amount of abuse that I'm you know putting these uh, these old motors to, is it's a six two block with six five heads, and so I should have six two head gaskets, but they're actually six five head gaskets, which is kind of a no no because it doesn't exactly match the deck of the block of the six two bore. So therefore, that kind of throws it off a little bit. So we're just going to zoom in, turn on this. You can see right here that the cylinder head is actually, the fire ring is kind of split and separated. And you can see all the other ones are fine, absolutely okay. And then when you look at it here, you can even notice it's kind of off-shaped. And also, you can clearly see that the uh, head gasket is broken completely. But other than that, everything else was fine. All the other cylinders were fine. Simple fact of the matter is it was just something going on with that their front part of the uh, motor. Like I said, most likely methanol because I'm spraying a thousand cc's of methanol into the uh, into the intake plenum, and so it's just not an ev even dispersion of the uh, of the methanol. When it goes into the turbos, it's kind of going to get like vaporized more than what it already is because that there's like the V2 or V3 methanol set up from AEM and it actually works really good. It's just the fact that uh, the setup that I had wasn't as good. So the new idea is that when it goes into the intakes and sprays directly into the turbo, there's going to be two jets this time instead of just one, which means that I'm going to be able to use um, a thousand cc's if I want it, 500 cc's or even 2000 cc's. So that's what I plan on doing is 2000 cc's of methanol that's going to be properly dispersed in the air and evenly dispersed across the cylinders of the motor, which is going to be a lot more efficient. Should be able to net me more power, more boost and everything, especially once I get the, um, uh, what do you call it? The built injection pump with 180 cc's of fuel. The methanol is going to make it so much richer and it's going to be terrible for the motor. It's going to be glorious. And also on top of that, I will be getting a, uh, a, um, intercooler setup eventually so one thing that i have done aside from the flow cooler water pump hd fan clutch pulley quick spool valves updating the coolant crossover is i also put a new harmonic balance around there new glow plugs which is something you should do after so many years but also i had to change it the connecting rod bearings so on the last time i redone this motor i was planning on doing them and i bought a set of connecting rod bearings that were one size over because when i checked it 
the connecting rod bearings, they were chewed up. And this is what I mean by chewed up. And this isn't even the worst of them. So those were the bearings and nearly all the bearings. There's only about three parts of that where it wasn't chewed up. And that's what I was doing 4,000 RPM burnouts on. And it's just not healthy, but it still withstood it with fucking impeccable uh, durability, which is very impressive. Um, it even, you know, ran with a blown head gasket for extended periods of time. I also rehoned the cylinders. I got new push rods and a new timing chain in the motor. So that's going to help drastically with everything, so long as I got it all done right, of course. And like I said, a new upper intake plenum that's going to be uh, defeating all the boost leaks that I had from that specific area. And it's just going to be, uh, you know, a little bit more factory OEM fit, and it's going to be a lot better bolting up. It'll also look nicer as well than that big, you know, bundle of mess. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So that's where the 6.2 slash 6.5 twin turbo diesel sits as of now. And whatever other modifications that get done along the way, you'll probably see when it's actually in the truck and running. We're at the very final stages of getting this done. And, um, so until I get everything fucking done, which, you know, you might hear from me every couple weeks, you might hear me from, hear from me every couple months, you, you don't really fucking know. And, uh, so I'll see y'all whenever I get some more shit, some more progress done. Uh, don't forget to check out all my previous videos because that's basically all I got going for me right now. But take her easy, buzz. I'll see you in the next one.